outcomes other than those provided by the reconnect grant program the reconnect program grant and that the tribal council has identified a portion of its american rescue plan fiscal recovery funds and the general tribes general fund as potential sources of funds to cover such costs and be it further resolved the tribe will commit to net neutrality in all broadmoat projects funded by the reconnect program and thus the tribe will not one block lawful content, application services, or non-harmful devices subject to reasonable network management Two, impair or degrade lawful internet traffic on the basis of internet content, application, or service, or use of a non-harmful device subject to reasonable network management. Three, engage in paid prioritization, meaning the management of a broadband provider's network to directly or indirectly favor some traffic over other traffic, including through use of techni techniques such as traffic shaping, prioritization, resource reservation, or other forms of preferential traffic management, either A, in exchange for consideration, in parentheses monetary or otherwise, from a third party, or B, to benefit an affiliated entity and be it further resolved. The tribe commits to implementing strong labor standards for broadband projects funded by the ReConnect program through its tribal employment rights ordinance. And be it further resolved, the tribe will use any awarded funding from the ReConnect program to serve socially vulnerable and underserved populations. And be it further resolved, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council has assigned the representative signature certifier role to Casey Peterson who will serve as a tri on the tribe's behalf and shall be responsible for providing signatures, authorizing certifications, entering and updating applications, submitting applications for consideration, and assigning access to new users in USDA's online application system for the tribe's reconnect program application. And be it further resolved that Casey Peterson will continue to serve as the representative signature certifier if the Oglala Sioux tribe is awarded a grant from the reconnect program and will be responsible for authorizing certifications, entering, updating, and submitting compliance reports and assigning access to new users in USDA's online financial reporting and compliance system. And be it further resolved, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council has assigned the role of administrator to the tribal president, tribal vice president, Kimmy Clausen, Daryl Hernandez, and Leslie Methsteth in parentheses, collectively the authorized representative, who will serve on the tribe's behalf and shall be responsible for using the USDA's online system to enter and update applications, enter, update, and submit compliance reports, and assign access to new users. And be it further resolved, the assigned representative signature certifier and assigned administrators shall comply fully with all security procedures and policies of the online application system for the ReConnect program, and for USDA's online financial reporting and compliance system. And be it further resolved that the Tribal Council, the Oglala Sioux Tribe, hereby rescinds resolution 22-19 and replaces that resolution with this resolution. Certification. Motion. Second. Motion, motion by Councilman Dreamer, second by Councilman Rodriguez. Spotted Bear and Yellow <laughs> Youngman. I'm sorry, guys. Um, any questions or comments before we run the vote? Hearing or seeing none, Madam Secretary, can you call the vote, please? Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Cora Whitehorse. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle Sr.? Yes. Gerald Kenoyer Jr.? Yes. Austin, Austin Watkins is, I think he's excused this afternoon. Right. Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman Jr.? Ron DeBray? Oh. James Cross? Ella Giancarlo. Yes. 
George Streamer Jr. Yes. Richard Ironcloud. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Uh, ah. Really Jack and Sears. Oh, uh huh. Michael Carlos Sr. There you go, that's. Bernardo Rodriguez Jr. <laughs> Garfield Still. Stacy, could you hear me? Stacy? Yeah. Oh, okay. I voted yes. Huh? Yeah, we got you. Stacy, you missed me. My vote is yes as well. Ella John, would you like to vote? Council that passes 13 yes for not voting. Chairman. Oh, thank you, Com committee, council. Thank you, Chairman. So moving on to the OSC President's Office resolution opposing House Bill 1110 amendment. Do we have anybody from the President's Office presenting that or? This was the one Sonia wanted on. Yes. Uh, Madam Vice. Yes, Councilwoman. Yes, I was. Uh, yesterday, we did take action to have the uh, attorney draft a resolution based on this uh, South Dakota HB, the one you just read. And I would like to see if uh, Secretary could read the resolution. It was just opposing that bill. Um, I think uh, Mr. Hanna did uh, write a letter to the president, but I thought maybe we better have a resolution, which would be a lot, uh, would hold a lot more um, uh, weight, I guess, when it gets to the, the South Dakota legislators. We need to have a resolution. So if the secretary could read that, Thank you for the background, uh, Councilwoman. Uh, Madam Secretary, would you mind reading that for us, please? Thank you. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe opposing House Bill 1110 in the South Dakota State Legislature because it would have the effect of depriving Indian children of their right to a guardian ad litem in abuse and neglect proceedings. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934-25 USC subsection 5123 and under article three of the Oglala Sioux Tribe constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas under Article 4, Sections 1B and 1W, the Tribal Council is vested with the power to protect and advance the rights of the tribe and its members, and to protect and promote the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas the Tribal Council enacts this resolution to express its opposition to House Bill 1110, which is now pending in the South Dakota Legislature. And whereas House Bill 1110 seeks to amend SDCL Section 26-8A-20 to read as follows, with additions underlined and deletions and strike through, appointment of representative of child's best interest duties. If a child is an apparent or 
alleged abuse or neglected child, the court may appoint a special advocate to represent the best interests of the child and to assist the child's attorney. If a child has been adjudicated an abused or neglected child and is removed from the child's home with the child's parents, guardian, or custodian, the court shall appoint a special advocate if available and may appoint a guardian ad litem when determined necessary by the court to represent the best interest of the child and to assist the child's attorney. The guardian ad litem or special advocate is an officer of the court for the purpose of representing the child's best interest. The guardian ad litem or special advocate shall receive all reports concerning the child and may cause the the case to be reviewed by the court pursuant to section 26-88-24. Whereas House Bill 1110, if passed, the bill will have the effect of stripping Indian children of a right they currently have, which is the right to have a guardian ad litem, litem also called a special advocate, who acts as an independent arm of the court to represent the best interest of the child in abuse and neglect proceedings. And whereas in its current form, SDCL section 26-8A-20 imposes a mandatory duty on the judge who presides over an abuse and neglect case to appoint, appoint a guardian ad litem, GAL, also known as special advocate for every child whom the court has found to be abused or neglected. The statute in its present form reads as follows, appointment of representative of child's best interest duties. If a child is an apparent or alleged abuse or neglected child, the court may appoint a special advocate to represent the best interest of the child and to assist the child's attorney. If a child has been adjudicated an abuse or neglected child and is removed from the child's home, with the child's parents, guardian, or custodian, the court shall appoint a guardian ad litem or a special advocate to represent the best interests of the child to assist the child's attorney. The guardian ad litem or special advocate is an officer of the court for the purpose of representing the child's best interests. The guardian ad litem or special advocate shall receive all reports concerning the child and may cause the case to be reviewed by the court pursuant to section 26-8A-24. And whereas the statute presently makes it mandatory for the court to appoint a guardian ad litem or special advocate to act as an officer of the court and to represent the best interest of the child. And whereas the main effect of House Bill 1110 would be to make the appointment of a guardian ad litem or special advocate discretionary such that the court may can appoint a guardian ad litem or special advocate for the child, but is not required to make such an, an appointment. And whereas the current law calls for appointed guardian ad litem or special advocates to be paid in the same manner that court appointed attorneys for the child are appointed, which means that the court has to pay the guardian ad litem or special advocates about $100 an hour if it appoints a guardian ad litem or special advocate other than a CASA volunteer. Because of this cost, this practical result of House Bill 1110 would be that courts are not going to appoint a guardian ad litem or special advocate, except in courts where court advocate special, uh, court appointed special advocates, CASA, provide services. That is because CASA is staffed by volunteer GALS and court, the court does not have to pay money for their services. And whereas approximately two thirds of all abuse and neglect cases in the state of South Dakota involve Indian children, which means that although the language of the bill is race neutral on its face, the impact of the bill will fall mostly heavily on Indian children. It will deprive them of a voice who will speak to their best interests. And since it is very rare indeed for courts to actually allow children, even adolescents to appear in the court hearings to be heard by the court, this bill will go further to deprive Indian children of a voice in the courtroom. 
And whereas guardians ad litem play a valuable role in these cases, they are often the only officers of the court in the case who have a real personal relationship with the ch children in the cases, and they provide very valuable information and advice to the courts. And whereas the use of the terms available and when determined necessary in House Bill 1110 removes the mandatory duty in sections 26-8A-22 point a special advocate or GAL. The effect of the bill is to make such appointments purely discretionary with the court with no standards to guide the decision as to whether a special advocate is available and when a guardian ad litem is necessary. And whereas House Bill 1110 is very badly written, the bill seems to draw a distinction between a guardian ad litem and a special advocate, treating them as two separate legal beings, which is not the intent of the original statute. House Bill 1110 creates a false distinction between a GAL and a special advocate. The way the bill reads, a court has discretion to appoint a special advocate and a guardian ad litem if it chooses to do so. This confusion of roles and language is sure to lead to confusion and application of the law and is open to differing inter interpretations, with, which makes it um, likely that the statute would be declared void for vagueness. Now, therefore, be it resolved that for the reasons set forth here and above, the Oklahoma Sioux Tribal Council hereby expresses its op opposing to bill, House Bill 1110, which is now pending in the South Dakota State Legislature. Huh? The bill is legally flawed and designed to make children, particularly Indian children, even more powerless than they already are in abuse and neglect proceedings. And be it further resolved that the Tribal President is authorized and directed to transmit this resolution to all members of the South Dakota State Legislature and to the Governor of the State of South Dakota. Certification. Motion. A motion to approve. I'll second uh, Ron's motion. motion. Uh, if there's no question, uh, Vice, Madam Vice Chair, I'll second <laughs> that. Chair, I have a comment as well. Yeah, we okay. Let's clarify the motion because I had Councilman jumping, but I heard Councilman Debray. So who wants to? Councilman Debray, count. Okay, so we have Councilman Debray, a second by Councilwoman, um, Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston, Councilman Jumping Eagle, Councilman Rodriguez, and Councilwoman Spotted Bear. You had a question, and then Councilman Yellow Boy. Is that correct? And Councilman, yes. second by Councilman Knoyer as well. So go ahead, Councilwoman Spotted Bear, and then Councilman Yellowboy. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Chair. I just wanted to bring up also that CASA was mentioned in there, and I wanted to uh, make uh, note that the Children's Justice Center also provides a guardian ad litem um, as a representation as well. And on the 23rd, through the 25th, we will be um, hosting uh, a meeting with the child protection team at the casino. And I just wanna encourage all, um, all participants to be there uh, to close out and finalize the updating and amending of the Family and Youth Code. Thank you, Councilwoman Spotted Bear, for that information. Appreciate it. Councilman Yellowboy. Thank you, Madam Vice. I'd like to yield the floor to Representative Queer. Members of the Council, for the record, I am Representative Puri Puyer from District 27. Um, I was invited here uh, by President Killer to, to talk a little bit um, a little bit more about HB 1110. Um, just for your information and for your situational awareness so you understand what's going on with that bill. Um, HB 1110 came before Judiciary Committee and the first time that it came, um, like you read in, in the write-up for um, um, Dana Hanna, Mr. Dana Hanna, um, it came with, um, it turned a shall to a may. And so the way it was presented to us um, it did, and I, I quickly read his, um, his legal opinion on this issue, 
um, he has definitely the subject matter expert on this, but the way it was presented us, it was, it came to us by the Supreme Court judge of, um, of South Dakota, of the state of South Dakota, um, by way of the ju unified judicial system, the UJS. And the way they described the problem was that there's cost of volunteer advocates and then there's a separate um, guardian ad litem. And the problem that they said was, CASA is a, a nonprofit program that does not have enough funding to meet the demand for all the children who are on the waiting list for this. There's double amount of the children on the waiting list that's either waiting for a, a CASA or a, a guardian at litem, but the emphasis was at CASA volunteers because he said there's only in certain circumstances that a child gets a guardian at litem. And those, he stated that they were rare circumstances and they were circumstances in which where a, a child, a youth was, was, was young and at, at an underage and, and it kind of conflicted with their um, lawyer and that's how it was explained was guardian at litem is a lawyer um, who is paid out of county's monies to represent and those certain circumstances are like if a child is 13 and they wanna be um, made independent from their parents um, and that child's 13 and it would go against what the lawyer thought was the best interest of the child, um, but, the chi but the lawyer still has to represent that child and what that child wants. So it kind of, th those were the circumstances in which they said that they would appoint a, a guardian ad litem. Um, CASA volunteers, like I said, are, were, were, was a different, they're not one in the same, they're different. Um, we do dove in deep and, and the original form of the bill I stopped completely if you listen to the audio, because I did not believe that that was the right solution. Um, there was comments from other um, legislators in the committee that you know they don't have a responsibility to fund CASA or that, because. CASA receives community dollars. CASAs are volunteers, they're not paid, and they get their funding from federal sources. So throughout the whole committee, and, and, and I asked a ton of questions, and what we gleamed from it was, was that CASA wasn't receiving any state funding. Um, so in, we deferred, we stopped the bill and said, wait a week, get everybody. I mean, Republicans have the super majority in the state. They have, they could do, they could push whatever thing that they want. And if they choose to take care of our children, then they need to do that and bring it to the table. So every, a lot of people got together, um, people on appropriations, a lot of um, people from the different branches and agencies got together and they said, wow, they came back with an amended part and they said, okay, well, if, if a guardian ad litem is required, then that language, if deemed by necessary of the court, then that language was in there. And the other part of it was um, appoint a special advocate if available. And the reason why that they were putting that in there is because the UJS system was, was breaking the law they were in a position where we do not have CASA volunteers. There's only certain circumstances where they would have a guardian ad litem and we were breaking the law. So they wanted to, that was the, the compromise that they came up with. Um, but they also pushed for funding for CASA. So there is um, appropriations coming. There's 9 million right now that are going for child abuse and neglect kids. And we advocated for 3 million of that to go straight to CASA to, to fund that program so that it would lift, it would take care of the children who are on the waiting list. Um, they did say that this is a timing issue, that they want to take care of the kids as quickly as possible. And they do have requirements to have that adjudication for those children. Um, so it was kind of putting every, it was a, it was a kind of a, a hard situation to be in because um, you want to help the kids and that's all that really matters. But um, I, I read this and um, this bill right now is, is going over to the Senate chamber. 
Um, and giving the information that, that we had at the time um, and all the different variables, um, we tried to come up with a comprehensive solution um, so that we wouldn't be forcing the UJS system to break the law, um, and, but then also pumping it with uh, $3 million straight to cost of volunteers. So there is chance for the, for the tribe to intervene within the legislative process. This is going to the Senate side. It has not been scheduled. Um, and given the tribe's um, stance on this issue, the, the tribe can push for an amendment. I have a, a good uh, rapport with the UJS officer who pushes these kind of bills. Um, the, the negotiations can happen if you want to push an amendment. If you want to make sure that ICWA is put in there, that you will, you will also abide as per the standards of ICWA or the requirements of ICWA, we could put that amendment in there. Um, and if they don't, it, you know, you could put different options of adding amendments into the bill. And if they do not accept that, then the tribe could go full force and oppose it. And um, whatever the tribe decides that they want to do, whatever strategy that they want to do to make sure that ICWA is being abided by and our children are being looked out for, um, I know that your lobbyist Ross and, and myself would be 100% for that and we'll do everything that we can to make sure the best interests of the tribe are looked out for. Um, so it's not, like I said, it's, over, it's going to the Senate chamber. It's not yet been scheduled. So I will keep a lookout for that and when it is scheduled, then whatever should the, the, the tribal council decide is in the best interest, then we'll push for it. And if it's an amendment or if it's option A, option B, two different amendments, or if it's just, if you don't accept that, then we're gonna go full force and oppose this bill. Um, we're 100% behind the tribe and whatever um, you, see, you see that is best for the kids. Question, Madam Vice Chair. Thank you, Representative Peter. Yes, Councilwoman. Uh, I just want to thank uh, our representative, uh, uh, Ms. Puyer, for coming today and explaining to the council as to what this bill uh, is about and how it was presented. I was getting phone calls from uh, community members that were very concerned about it, especially the ones that uh, work with children. And I do agree maybe that we need to, uh, you know, the, the resolution as read, uh, pre, you know, I think that we wanted to make sure we had something, you know, and to be ahead of it so that we don't, you know, we're not caught off guard. So I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, President uh, Killer is going to make sure that that is presented to the full house and um, maybe you can communicate with him and just keep him updated as to where the bill is. But I really do think that we do need to oppose this bill because it is very detrimental to our native uh, children, you know, that uh, are abused and neglected or taken away off the reservation. And I think we need to be, uh, we need to strongly oppose this as the Oglala Sioux tribe because of the ICWA you know, law that we have in place. So I just want to thank you for coming and explaining what that bill, how it was presented and uh, what it's about. So um, if you can keep President Killer informed and updated on it. So I just wanted to say that much and hope that we can get, you know, this, you know, to the uh, full house. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Any other questions or comments, Council? Hearing or seeing none, Madam Secretary, can you call the vote, please? Do we have a question? No? Okay. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Cora Whitehorse. Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr. Yes. Gerald Knoyer Jr. Tyler Yellowboy. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Ron Debray. 
James Cross. Okay. Ella John Carlo. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Jillian Spotted Bear? Yes. Richard Ironcloud? Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ha. Ha. Jackie Sears? Oh, uh huh. Michael Carlos Sr.? Yes. Bernardo Rodriguez Jr.? Yes. Garfield Still? Yes. Fifteen. Council that passes. Fifteen yes. Two not voting. Thank you, Representative Puyer, for coming and giving us that information. And um, in the resolution, it says that President Killer will get this to the governor as well as other folks in the state. So um, we'll look forward to him getting that out there and following to see how this goes. Um, we did have a two thirds item. Oh, sure, yeah, Councilman Yellowboy. So um, thank you. And I know this isn't a part of the, what was, um, uh, just passed, but I think because uh, she's our representative up there in Pierre and we had this uh, quick dialogue while the or, or ordinance was being re read there, um, a question was asked of me yesterday by our revenue director about the proposed gross tax bill that's being um, brought to the floor of the House, and uh, I just want to ask um, our representative here if she can elaborate a little bit on that. So that's the gross gross tax cut or reduction. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Um, so right now, so every year, we currently probably have about 700 bills that come through. It, it averages between a two, 700, 800, 900 sometimes. But um, well, there's a lot, every, every representative comes and pitch their bill and there's a lot of tax bills. And this particular tax bill is introduced by Representative Carr, who's the chair of the House Appropriations Committee. And so what it's going to do, what it proposes to do, is lower the tax from 4.5 to 4.0. So it wants to lower it a half a percent um, on all sales tax um, across the state of South Dakota. Um, this bill has not been approved yet. It has been scheduled for hearings. It hasn't reached the floor. So it originated in the floor. And once it, next week is crossover day, which is the deadline for all bills to transfer to the next chamber. So um, next week's going to be very busy. And if this goes through and it gets approved, it'll come to the House floor. Um, and then it'll transfer over to the Senate and whatever. The, the tribes have their all have their own individual tax state tax compact agreements. So um, the governor has stated publicly that she is not really sure if she's on board with it or not. Because ultimately, for it to go into effect, the governor would it would have to pass the House side, the Senate side, and then the governor would have to sign on it. So the governor has stated um, that. She, she has concerns like there's there's a windfall state has a lot of money um, everyone has a lot of money right now but she's saying that this isn't long term and this tax would be for a long term there hasn't been any amendments yet to to put a like a sunset clause on there um, like if it it stops at a certain point in time um, so it would as the bill stands right now it would lower the taxes 0.5 until the foreseeable future, until somebody changes the in law. Um, so the that's another thing that the tribe would have to decide what their stance would be on it. Um, but you do have state compact agreements. Um, so 
whatever the tribe wants to go forward with and whatever strategy you want to come up with. Just allow me to be a resource for you and a point of information. And I'll stand and I, by for any questions. Thank you. And I, I only bring that up because that tax agreement is at 4.5% for our tribe and um, it would it would affect us. I think when I spoke with Mr. Palmer yesterday, it, it will affect us. So I think he said a little over $300,000 in our tax collection. And I know there's a, you know, we have in our general fund, that's where um, that tax money comes in. And, and, it, and so that's why I asked, uh, we were visiting back there. And I think we need to have a, a conversation in regards to our stance on that, in case it does make it out of committee and into the to the House and to the Senate to see where our stance is as a tribe. And not only us, but we have our, our other tribes that have compacts with the state and we weren't, this wasn't uh, brought to any of the tribes, I believe not to ours. This was just made aware of, or I was just made aware of this yesterday. So I think we need to have a, a conversation about that maybe in finance committee or in EB&D. If I can make a comment, Chair. Um, every bill, um, when you go to when you see it going to hearing and on the website, there's a tracker on there, and you can track any bill. And when it goes up to hearing, that means they're going to call for a proponent and opponent testimony. Um, so at any point in time, you can in any bill that you're concerned about, um, you can send a message or any, even members of the public, um, but the tribe could give an official stance on, on certain individuals. And if I can make myself available, make give a proponent or opponent testimony, or you could send your lobbyist, um, Ross Bell, um, I mean, Ross Garlic Bell to, to go give that testimony as well. But there's an opportunity during that hearing time on the House, and then when it transfers over to the Senate, there's another hearing opportunity, and all the amendments are also published on the website. So um, doors are wide open for if anybody wants to express any opponent or um, proponent testimony. I do request, though, if you're really strong on killing something to, to loop us in, because we do have we do have rapport and working relationships and we can be very convincing um, when it comes to a personal level um, because we're, we're there to inform. There's, it's a, it's a, if you've ever been up there, it's a huge building and a lot of these people never, I don't have, know anything about the res. They don't know anything about Indian country. They don't know anything about federal policies or how that interworms on the state level. So um, a lot of times they rely on on people who do know so if when there's a strategy in place please contact me you sh you all should have my numbers the number is public on the website and that's my personal cell phone that's on the public website so if you ever have a concern please let us know because we besides just showing up for opponent and proponent testimony there are other ways through working relationships to inform legislators on why something is important and then why is why something needs to stop. Um, so we're just an extension of, of protecting sovereignty. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Uh, Councilman Rodriguez? Yeah, um, it's 0.5%, and that, to my understanding, should be what, uh, I think it was a tally, so about $300,000 cut to us, but that 4% also is gonna cut into, um, half a cent goes to teacher salaries as well. So that means it, it's going to cut everybody pretty much is what's going to end up happening here. So I think we really need to oppose this. That's my feeling. Did you hear me? Or? They are pushing for, a, um, they are pushing for um, a point, the governor's pushing for a 0. 0.6 increase in, in teachers pay. Um, and some people are pushing for a 0. 0.8 because they're arguing that inflation that's supposed to cover inflation and cost of living, the 0.6 increase, and the governor is supposed to be putting that in there every year in her budget. So she creates a proposed budget. So when December comes around and you see headlines about the governor's budget, that's her proposed budget. The legislature has to approve of that pro proposed budget, and there's arguments going on that that really should be 0.8 um, in that 
in that. And there's the the formula is kind of brings in from different sources of revenue, but there isn't an increase in there for the teachers. Um, but you know, like I said, whatever your strategy is, I just defer to to the council. Thank you, Representative. Anything else, Councilman? Any other questions or comments, Council? Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, Councilman Knoyer, did you have something? Yes. Um, what What's the time frame here that they're they're looking at pushing that? You said crossover day. Chair, thank you. Um, thank you, Councilman, for your for your question. Um, so Wednesday is crossover day. So if a bill originated in the house, so this bill originated in the house, it has to cross over by Wednesday. So it's been scheduled for a couple hearings. Appropriations actually meets every single morning and they're the ones who deal with, <coughs> excuse me, I just for the record, because I coughed on the record, um, there used to be this thing called a common cold before everybody started talking about COVID and I, I've been tested and I just have a common cold. I have a toddler, so, but, <coughs> um, so it's, <coughs> it has to come to the house floor either on Tuesday or Wednesday. <coughs> Sorry, I just have a tickle in my throat, but, um, it has to come over by then, and then it goes over to the Senate side. So that date, um, it hasn't passed House appropriations yet. So it hasn't passed out of committee yet. They haven't made a decision on it. Um, it should be heard on Tuesday or Wednesday, so it'll cross over on Wednesday evening. <coughs> <coughs> But just to just for third order unintention unintentional consequences, third order effects here. Um, the tribe would have to look at if if the whole state of South Dakota is going to be lower sales tax. Put a new one. and the and the tribe is not. Then where are people going to go to go shopping? How is that going to affect our local economy? That's just a factor to evaluate in your decision making process, but. Again, if this goes through, um, we definitely would, would request that there was some kind of stance on it by Tuesday. So if it does go to committee on Tuesday. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so if it does go on Tuesday or, or Wednesday, we can already know your stance. And we could be prepared to 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 promote your stance. And if we again, you don't always have to oppose something. You could try to push an amendment first. There is a bill right now that I'm working with your lawyers here at Oglala Sioux Tribe that a lot of people don't don't really know about because I'm trying to work an amendment in there. Um, so and it's it would detrimentally affect public safety here in the reservation. But I'm working with an amendment for that bill in particular. Um, and I can explain that here in a minute, but just to answer your specific question, um, the deadline would probably be Tuesday because they could hear it on Tuesday and it could go to the floor on Wednesday. But if you if you don't want to make that deadline, we still have time on the Senate side. And if if we can if you want to put in language that says they'll honor they're all they they have to honor the state tax compact agreements with tribes. So Again, I would defer um, to your your expertise. The, uh, do you want? I brought up another bill in my talk. <laughs> so Councilman Quinori, that answer your question? Yes. Um, so, just with the information that was provided, that kind of means that we either need to have an emergency finance meeting, or whichever committee, right? Finance. Yeah, it would be either a finance meeting or EB and D meeting combined, because this does deal with um, economic business development as well as the finance. So um, I, we'd have to get with, well, I don't know where George went, but <clears throat> with um, Cora and see if we can do a, a quick emergency finance EB and D um, meeting together by, uh, 
Monday or Tuesday, or well, Tuesday we have council, so we'll have to be either Monday. And that that's Land's Day, so. Oh, Monday's a holiday. Oh, Monday's a holiday. Tribal President's Day. Oh. So, do we want to figure that out after we get out of this meeting of that yep. special? Okay, thank you. Um, Representative Pooter said she brought up another bill. Do we want to hear about the other bill, Council? Yes. Okay. Yes. Floor is yours. So there's another bill um, that also came up in judiciary. I sit on the Judiciary Committee, um, Taxation Committee, and Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. But there's another bill that came up, and um, what this bill does, it's a Second Amendment sanctuary bill. So what essentially what this bill says is that if there was any executive orders or laws coming from the federal government that would take away or prohibit your guns and your ammunition, that the state would not be able to enforce that and would actually penalize employees, police officers, um, any members of the state to if they enforced it um, when it comes to guns and firearms and ammunition. So this bill, when it came before me, it raised red flags for me. Um, because what that affects is the cross-jurisdictional cooperation. So if you're in a situation where uh, our police officers need assistance, and, and even if federal officers need assistance, um, if there's a pursuit going off of res line and you got to contact the county, the neighboring county, or if you any of that cross the state, um, the law enforcement they could be penalized for helping. And if there was guns involved and ammunition involved, um, the state could be penalized for assisting that. Um, there, they allowed a lot of amendments and, and the sponsor of the bill to work on the amendment. Um, and again, a lot of um, the majority of legislators up there don't have a clue of what's facing Indian country. So when they write bills, they don't have Indian country in mind. So it's our responsibility to speak up and educate people. And so I immediately, um, I spoke against the bill in committee um, several times. It passed out of committee um, and it's going to the House floor on Tuesday. I, sp I immediately got with your lawyers, um, your lobbyist, Ross, I said, you get this out to the tribes right away. I need a legal opinion and I need a stance right away of, of what the detrimental effect would be. I need it written out. And so why your lawyers responded um, in, a, in a very strong way. And I appreciate that. And I, I just want to say thank you for that. And I sent that out. I'm right now trying to work with that bill sponsor to put in amendment. And I'm my... As, as your representative, as, as this district's representative, my stance is, I will come to you if I have a concern. I will offer an amendment. Um, if you do not incorporate that or put that into your bill so it doesn't negatively and have a negative Im impact on our public safety here, um, then I will come out full force and oppose if you reject my amendments or if you reject working um, with with us so right now he's looking over the the information that was compiled by your lawyers and other tribes as lawyers and i just want to say that the state affects us in so many different ways um and it would be so if if it was an ideal world i would love for all the tribes to send in their stances on issues so that we could have a unified response when it comes to the state of south dakota in in bills like this um, so I'm waiting for that representative to either accept or reject, and I'm, I'm hoping that he will add a provision in there that would allow uh, cooper cooperation in those certain circumstances. For instance, if you have no, uh, no fee land, non-member, there's some tribes who call in the highway patrol to come get that non-member if they're actively committing a crime and that would put a chilling effect on that cooperation so that's where that bill stands right now but this is an example of informing the council that it's very important that you have um, a team 
and that you're on the same page with other tribes when it comes to public safety and, and these type of, of, of situations that would detriment and make a lot of things worse for us. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Any other questions for Representative Puyer? Thank you for your time. Thank you for bringing those forward and informing us on those. Um, sounds like we'll have a, our finance and EMBD will be figuring out how to meet on the tax piece. Um, so I'm sure they'll keep you updated and, and connect with you on that. So thank you. So we did have a two thirds item, which was a superintendent of the BIA, but it, I was informed that she is not available today. Is that correct, Councilman Carlo? You made the motion. That's correct. <clears throat> I'd still like to continue with what I would like to present to the council. I know the council was hoping that our media would get over early and, you know, I too had an appointment to get snow tires put on my knee walker that I had to cancel. So, you know, I'll try to make this brief. You know, President Killer and Vice President Musso are the engineers on this train. You know, tickets are free to both the BIA and the IHS. All you got to do is get on board. The OST Land Committee, you know, it's comprised of a watchdog membership to protect the land, the natural resources, and generate revenue to the tribe. Today, we have some issues that I'm going to bring up, and I'm going to ask at the end of the, my presentation that we ask the area director of the BIA, Mr. LaPointe, and our superintendent be in attendance at the meeting on Tuesday, and that we put them first on the agenda. You know, the, the issues right now is the BIA obligated 300,000 to do a fencing project on the range unit so that we could divide those range units. And we haven't received income, nor have our membership received income in over 10 years. And now we've been threatened if the land office does not take this contract, operate it, that that money will be given to another tribe. This is total nonsense and BS. The agreement that was in place needs to be negotiated by our attorneys with the BIA before we will accept or we will even allow that money to be transferred to another tribe. Our allocation committee today cannot meet at the BIA because of social distancing, which I believe that they can do in some type of room up there. And all the records are at the BIA where they need to be there to meet. You know, we had six different department heads of the IHS that were here yesterday. You know, if they can come and meet in person with us, why can't we do the same thing at the Bureau of Indian Affairs when it comes to revenues? And these leases need to be done and in place by the first of next month. So my motion is to direct the president, the vice president, to not only ask, but demand that the area director and that our superintendent be at the meeting on Tuesday and it be first on the agenda motion. Thank you, Councilman Carl. We have a motion and a sec by Councilman Carlo, a second by Councilman Rodriguez and Councilman Jumping Eagle. Any questions or comments? Yes, Councilman Rodriguez. To, um, to add to what he said, the, uh, the superintendent was supposed to attend most of our meetings when we when we talked to be there to hear our issues and especially in the land committee and she was advised of that i don't know how many times you know mike had told her that and represent uh, chairman carlo over there and well, she hadn't showed up to one so i don't know what and then when she does show up it's all a whole home and like i really don't want to be here type attitude and it's uh yeah, and I made a vote of no confidence in the BIA already, and I know we affirmed that already several times, and I don't know why we just don't take over all of it. Do it ourselves. 
Thank you, Councilman Rodriguez. So hope we will get that letter out. Um, we'll run the vote first, but then we'll get the letter out um, for that on to get them on our agenda for Tuesday first thing. Any other questions or comments before we run the vote, Council? Hearing or seeing none, Madam Secretary, can you call the vote, please? Wesley Hawkins, Senior. Cora Whitehorse. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Senior. Yes. Gerald Kenoyer, Jr. Yes. Tyler Yellowboy. Aye. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. Ron Debray. Oh. James Cross. Ella Giancarlo. Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. Yes. Julian Spotted Bear. Yes. Richard Ironcloud. Yes. Sonia Littlehawk Weston. Ah. Jackie Sears. Oh, huh. Michael Carlo, Sr. Yes. Yeah. Council that passes 13 yes, three not voting. Chairman Carlo, did you have anything else? That's it, Madam Vice Chairman, and I make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. We have a second by Councilman Rodriguez, but Councilman Jumping Eel, did you have a question or comment? Yeah, real quick, before we adjourn, um, Vice Chair, you know, for the listening audience, we have some pretty cold weather coming in, starting Monday snow and, and, and freezing temperatures. So, you know, I just want the listening audience to know, you know, check your propane tanks, you know, get your wood if you have to prepare, you know, because a lot of a lot of calls we get is right right during the, you know, right in the middle of it, and sometimes we can't get them help. So just a reminder to prepare for that cold and the snow that's coming. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. Also, Monday is a tribal president's day, so it is a holiday, so it'll be a long three-day weekend. Yes, Councilman Yellowboy? I just want to say thanks to the secretary for getting us the new equipment and for um, I got a lot of comments on the radio that it's clear and that they can hear better and so thank you for working on getting us the new equipment so we can um, get our listeners out there better quality to listen in so thank you and thank you for allowing me to to buy it and to purchase it so I really do do appreciate the support. Thank you. Teamwork makes the dream work. Thank you all for all your work today and for honoring our youth and Councilman Knoyer, thank you for that. Um, Want to say have a good weekend and stay safe out there. Madam Secretary, can you call the vote on the adjournment, please? Cora Whitehorse. Ryan Jumpin Eagle Sr. Yes. Gerald Knoyer Jr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. <laughs> Wendell Youngman Jr. Ron Debray. Oh. James Cross. Ella John Carlo. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Spotted Bear. Yes. Richard Ironcloud. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ah. Jackie Sears. Uh -huh. Michael Carlos Sr. Yes. Bernardo Rodriguez Jr. Garfield Still. Yes. Counts up votes passes 13 yes. Abstaining. One abstaining and two not, voting. two not voting. So we adjourn today at 1.23 p.m. We'll be back in regular council meeting next Tuesday and Wednesday. So we'll see you then. Thank you. Recording stopped.